this. Make it fine. Make it fine. M I P. With Masamela Mafuma. Mark Thompson. Make it fine. Get woke. <laughs> My guest today served as U.S. Representative for the 11th Congressional District of Ohio from 2008 to March 9, 2021. She was a member of several congressional caucuses and past chair of the Congressional Black Caucus. As a member of Congress, she served and earned a reputation of tackling the unique challenges of her district by working with her congressional delegation and across political ideology. She now is the 18th Secretary of the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. We welcome to make it plain, Secretary Marsha Fudge. And of course, there's this bipartisan infrastructure framework that exists. And one of the areas that is being addressed is the area of high-speed internet. And a lot of us take for granted that everybody has access to an internet because many of us do, but there's so many more who don't. Senator Schumer is planning to put this on the floor by the end of this month, trying to make sure that there is some action on it before uh, the beginning of August. But I do think that it is in a good place. I do believe that it is bipartisan and, and, and there are enough votes at this point to pass it. So I'm hopeful that it's going to continue to move as rapidly as it seems to be now. So there are a few things there. And, and I want to start with one that I think was glaring during the pandemic. We saw it in terms of, of people in the workplace and even saw it in, in terms of, of schools and children being able to attend school virtually. Some of us say for granted, everybody has internet. And, and that's not the case, is it? This, this infrastructure- It's not even close. Work. Yeah, yeah. That would address that, wouldn't it? Oh, it would address it greatly. I mean, think, think about it this way. When COVID first hit us, what did they tell us to do? They said, work from home. They said, don't send your children to school they need to learn virtually from home. So if you did not have broadband or high-speed internet, you could not work from home, mm -hmm. nor could your children learn from home. So what we found, which is something that we've always known, in poor communities, in communities of color, and in inner city communities, the people who have internet is so small. Mm -hmm. It's so small. And in addition to that, most of them don't even have the devices necessary to be able to learn, even if they have it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this is huge to talk about making sure that every single American household has access to high-speed internet. It's, it's huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's important to uh, address. And speaking of schools, this legislation would also uh, electrify school buses, wouldn't it? It would indeed. I mean, think about it this way. We, we really have millions of children in this country who have lost an entire year of education because they did not have access and or could not afford to buy access to high speed Internet or broadband. Yeah, it is yeah. a travesty. Yeah. So now that we're talking about electrifying buses and making sure all schools and homes, I think it is one of the most important pieces of this entire infrastructure framework. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we should also mention uh, when we talk about um, young people not having access to Internet, folks, we're also talking about young people in tribal lands as well, aren't we? They are so much worse than people can even imagine. Think about a place that doesn't even have, many of them don't even have plumbing, Reverend. So you can imagine what access to internet is like yeah. in many of these communities. It's sometimes less than 10%. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so there's the internet, there's the electrification of school buses that would improve um, um, the air quality that uh, young people have to, to deal with. Overall, we are also talking about disparate impacts of pollution on communities of color. This legislation also would invest in a, in a cleaner energy grid, wouldn't it? Absolutely, it does. And the reason that it is so important to communities of color is that we tend to live in areas that are more affected by things like 
manufacturing plants, pollution in general, Superfund sites, brownfields. Right. So since our communities are so often cut off by things like freeways or expressways, we are caught in a web almost that is polluted. And so once we start to talk about the climate pieces that are in this, cleaning up these sites, making sure that our communities are not cut off, it is going to make a major difference in the health, especially of young children who are getting asthma at an alarming rate, as are their parents, unfortunately. The other thing it's going to do is provide transportation to allow people who live in those communities to get to decent jobs outside of those polluted communities, to start to see their lifestyles broaden because of access to yeah. other things. Yeah, uh, you know, that's that's very important uh, as well. And, and when we talk about the Superfund and the pollution, something else that I think many have thought has been resolved, but still hasn't, and that's exposure to lead. People think that's somehow in the past, but, but that's still real, isn't it? It is more real than you can imagine. The bipartisan infrastructure framework does address lead in water. So all schools and homes and churches or wherever it may be that still have lead pipes, those are going to be completely changed out so that people don't have to deal with lead and water. But lead, Reverend, is a major problem in paint as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm hopeful that if this next passage, package it is there. I live in a county, Cuyahoga County, which is where Cleveland is, which is where my home is, where more than a thousand children annually mm. are poisoned and devastated for life by lead. Mm. It is a major issue in poor communities and communities of color. And I'm so really happy that the president and vice president are addressing this issue. It's, it's such a big, big problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More MIP after this message. What up, y'all? It's Torre, author of I Would Die For You, Why Prince Became an Icon. Check out Who Was Prince, an epic eight episode podcast about Prince, where we talk to his girlfriends, his musicians, his engineers, his managers, all sorts of people who were close to him to find out who he really was. Follow Who Was Prince wherever fine podcasts are streamed. So folks, this, this is what is taking place with the bipartisan infrastructure framework. Uh, the secretary is, is, is working very hard on that. We should also mention, and we touched on the transportation infrastructure, but specifically, for those you who don't know, Asian American and African American work is commuted by public trans transit at nearly four times the rate of whites. Low wage black residents in Chicago spend 70 additional minutes continuing to work than their white peers. In New York City, the average black resident spends 110 minutes more per week commuting to work than the average white resident. So this framework would also deal with that part of the infrastructure as well in terms of, 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 of upgrading, renewing, and investing in public transit. And frankly, if you invest in public transit, it also helps the climate as well, doesn't it? No question about it. And that's one of the reasons that we're doing it because everything that we are doing is, is, is looking through two lenses, one through climate resiliency, but the other through a lens of equity. The great thing about all of these things that are happening is that it creates jobs, jobs in our community. We're looking at millions of jobs that will be created, most of which, almost 90 percent of which, do not require a college degree. We're talking about apprentice program, apprenticeship programs so that people in our communities can get these jobs mm -hmm. and they can work in, in, in environments that you can't outsource. And so that's the other really big thing about this and the exciting thing about it is that we are looking at changing people's lives. This is transformational legislation. And I'm just, uh, I can't tell you enough how much the president and vice president want to change the lives of people who are in need. Yeah, no, no, this, I agree. This is important. Infrastructure is so important. Um, and we know also what that will do for the economy and jobs. It, it's really unfathomable that the other side would be against something like this because this is even going to help their constituents. Let's be very honest about that. Yeah. It, you know, it's oh, going to help everybody. Yeah. <laughs> how, do, how do you how do you say you don't want to support clean water? I mean, yeah. how do you how do you say that you don't want to support the electric grid or you don't want to support broadband or you don't think it's important for people to drive on roads that are safe? I don't know how you say that. Right, right, right. And and there's one other area as as well. 
we know that communities of color are disproportionately affected by the climate crisis, extreme weather risks, flooding, and all of that stuff all the time. This would also build safeguards, in fact, invest $52 billion uh, in safeguards to help our communities that are disproportionately affected there, wouldn't it? It would help in a way that no one could ever have imagined. People think when they see storms and floods and things like that, it doesn't happen to me. All I can tell you is look at Ninth Ward in Louisiana. Right. Look at the panhandle of Florida. Look at look in Puerto Rico. Look, look in communities after community. These are communities of color primarily. Yeah, yeah. So it, it is going to affect us greatly. Yeah. More MIP after this message. Lastly, Madam Secretary, that's on infrastructure, but one other area I want to ask you about that I'm sure you are looking at considering, because I know you, we have a tremendous, as you know, home ownership gap within the African-American community. And I don't know whether you have come up with a plan yet, but I'm sure it's on your mind. What are you thinking? What are you looking at in terms of the, of the long term? And, and have you all started the process of trying to figure out a way to close that gap? We have, and I'm so glad that you asked me about it. Now, you know that that's something that is near and dear to my heart, especially knowing that the home ownership gap between white and black Americans is the same as it was in 1968 when we first passed the Fair Housing Act. So some of the things that we are already doing is we have requested in our budget $100 million to assist first time home buyers. We know that most people of color who can pay rent as a general rule can pay a mortgage. The down payment is the problem. Right. So we are looking at how we do down payment assistance. We are already also looking at how we assess credit. We have been disproportionately weighting student loan debt in a very negative way in credit reports, where who has student loan debt? Black, brown, and poor people. So it was built into the system to make it more difficult. We're also looking at how we create new ways of keeping people in their homes that already have a home coming out of COVID who may be in arrears. We're looking at modifications. We're talking to our servicers. We're looking at appraisals. We're doing everything we can, Mark, to be sure that our people get a fair shot. So everything that is going on at HUD today is through a lens of equity. Yeah. and ensuring that fair housing is the law of the land, and we intend to enforce it. Yeah, outstanding. Glad to hear. Folks, the 18th Secretary of the Department of Housing and Urban Development, happy to have her in that role, former Congresswoman Marsha Fudge. Madam Secretary, a pleasure to speak with you today. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. Take All good right, care, my friend. Thank, thank you. Thanks for getting woke and listening to Make It Plain. Please remember to listen, like, and wherever you get your podcasts, please give the show a five-star rating. And please do spread the word. Let's all continue to pray for each other during this pandemic and this police-demic. If all hearts and minds are clear, it has been made plain.